you, I know you sort of wrote the, with these characters with sort of George and Julia in yes. mind. Yes. Is that quite nervy when you await the response for, for, for actors when you've written a character that you intend for them to take yeah, on? Yeah, it's terrifying. I mean, you aim high, obviously. And then the, the really scary bit was that we did a thing that you're never supposed to do, which is we sent it to both of them at the same time, mentioning the other one. I wrote a letter to both of them, but in each one I said, I've written this for you and the other one. And so if one of them turns it down, then the other one's going to turn it down, and then you've blown your chance at either. But, um, yeah, there was an amazing moment to get the call that, you know, subject to a call, they were going to say yes. It was amazing. I mean, when you're dealing with two of the most iconic actors still living today, does there come a point as a director, I know you've still got to give directions, you've still got to tell them what to do and stuff, but is there, is there a point where you just go, you guys are so well-versed and so experienced, particularly like in genres like this, that you have to kind of just let them take it away in, to some degree? Yeah, completely, yeah. I mean, and they're, they're very generous. They pretended to listen to me and <laughs> pretended to do anything that I asked them to do, you know, before reverting to what they were doing right before I got involved. But, um... Yeah, I mean, they know what, you know, it's just, it's, it's a gift rather than, a, they know what they're doing, especially Julia is the queen of the show, do you know what I mean? And so, not that George doesn't know what he's doing. And so you can, you know, it just makes for an easier day, you know, one take and you're like, yeah, that was great. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, this is a compliment, but this film felt like something that could have been made 20 to 25 Thank years ago. It had that kind yeah. of nostalgic feeling to it. Um, why do you think there are less rom-coms and good rom-coms like this these days than there sort of used to be? I think, uh, thank you, by the way, I think I think the tropes got a bit tired. I think the airport dash and the structure of it, people started to, you know, if you know the ending, which is obviously the case with the rom-com, you know roughly how, so the, the journey is the point. And I think the journey became a bit cliched. And so, but it's nice to try and bring it back. I mean, when, when we were on set, George's greatest compliment, if he saw a shot we'd lined up or there was a beat in it, was to shout, old school. And so it was very consciously a throwback to the kind of movies. And, you know, they're incredibly glamorous movie stars. So, um, yeah, it was a deliberate thing. Because I love seeing films like this in the cinema. I think I was sort of speaking with people in this room, actually, to Idris Elba uh, about the film Beast last week, which yeah. also felt like a bit of a kind of throwback in a kind of nostalgic yes, way. And I was yeah. speaking to them about how important it is that films like this still find a home theatrically. Because, it, you know, there is obviously such a rise in kind of sure. prequels and sequels sure, yeah. and reboots and MCU sort of stuff. But is it something you really want have to sort of fight for to make sure that films like this are still landing in kind of cinemas. Yeah, we had the option of not doing this in cinema. And in a way, there's a relief for the filmmaker in that you stay out of the tyranny of the marketplace. And so films aren't flops or not, they're just films. Do you know what I mean? They're not judged on by how much money they make or don't make. And that's obviously a nice thing for a filmmaker. But we very much wanted to try and bring audiences back to the cinema. And also, like, if this isn't a cinema movie, I don't know what is. You know, partly because of the glamour of the leads, partly because of the beauty of the locations, but also because it's lovely to have a lot of people in a room laughing together and sitting rooms just don't give that. Comedies just don't play as well in your house mm -hmm. as they do in a cinema, do you know what I mean? And so, yeah, we very much hope a lot of people go and pay and go. I mean, like with any films where Americans or kind of Brits are to travel to a foreign land, the kind of cultural differences are highlighted and part of the comedy derives from the American family sort of trying to navigate that, which is fine. When we go abroad, we all have to, have to adjust to different places and ways of living. Was it quite a conscious balance for you kind of tonally to ensure the film celebrated people's differences, but it's never condescending and they're never too different, if that makes sense? Thank you very much. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, there's a joke at the beginning where you, uh, George makes a slightly kind of racist assumption about the dad that he's, and the dad starts laughing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you try and, I mean, I've, it turns out I've written three films in a row now that have been, you know, characters going to far-flung places and learning about different cultures. And it's not, you know, it just seems to be something that I'm doing, which is nice for me because I get to go to these places and meet new people. Um, yeah, I think if you do it with respect and humility and take it, you know, then uh, it's beautiful. I mean, there's a wedding ceremony in this film that I find intensely moving. Mm -hmm. And I loved learning about it. I loved learning about the different rituals and trying to celebrate them. And also, George was eating a murtabak at one point. A murtabak is one of my favourite things. That's <laughs> nice, isn't it? Yeah, and it's yeah. like he had the real thing, and he yeah. was like, it's not bad. No, yeah, we were all eating on set that night. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> and lastly, I'm assuming, yeah. uh, given your history, that you're a big ABBA fan, I just wanted to know if you've been to that ABBA experience yet. Voyage, yeah. I have, yeah. yeah. I went, I've been a few times, actually. <laughs> I know, you know, because I know quite well. So, um, yeah, I saw I went to a very early one where it wasn't working and they weren't sure that it was going to work. And then I went on the first night and it was, you know, it's ridiculous. It's sensational. That's good to hear because I'm sort of toying with whether I should spend 100 quid on it, but I think I'm going to do it. Have you not seen it? No, I've not seen oh it. Oh my God, really you've go. never seen anything like it. Okay, cool. I mean, even if you don't like Abbott, you've yeah, never yeah. seen anything like oh, I it. I love Abbott. Well then, you know. <laughs> oh no, go. Okay, cool. Completely That's go. all I needed to hear. No, totally Brilliant. go. Oh, I can't yeah. wait to go. Thank yeah. you so much. Oh, no, that's really, it. Take, Take care. care. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching...
Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you 